Hello, welcome back. My name is Daniel Gomali. Welcome back to uh, my channel. And I just say I want to talk about maybe a slightly controversial subject, which is um, what I would say is the rise of the chess super kid. And uh, some might see this as being a negative post, but I just want to talk about a subject I think a lot of people um, are slightly concerned about, which is uh, kind of overtraining of prodigies. And are they actually desiring to do this themselves? Or are they deciding to, um, or they've been maybe pushed by pushy parents? So just to give you some background, my own chess history, I was taught um, chess when I was about six or seven years of age. I can't actually remember exact age. I was taught by my dad when we were home in London. And I picked it up straight away. So he, he got a chess set out and he taught my, my, me and my sister uh, to play. And I kind of picked it up straight away. But I was never really pushed into chess. I kind of became obsessed with chess when I was younger. And I think that's the route that a lot of younger chess players um, go down is they became they become obsessed about chess I mean that's, that's true of um, most good chess players however there is a kind of a darker side this is really what I want to talk about in this in this um, video and I've written a blog and it basically I'll talk about how this eight-year-old kid called Ashworth uh, could be the next super talent so it seems that every week there is a new tale of a child defeating the grandmaster at chess, and I myself lost a nine-year-old uh, Bandry super t Bandry in the Hastings Blitz event. I think during the course of my career, I've rarely lost to someone that young. So really, I'll uh, talk about how we've seen now with these like uh, eight to ten-year-olds. It's this incredible generation. So we've got players like that in England as well, like Bod Hanna. Uh, Shreyas Raw is a bit older, of course, uh, but. Uh, Banjuri, who I lost to, uh, Freddie Gordon is a little bit older as, as well, but there's players uh, around the world, actually, who got into chess through the pandemic. There's a kid called Faustino Oro, who started off in Argentina, is now living in Spain. Uh, there's a kid called Roman, um, who's appeared on YouTube as um, Nakamura Jr. And uh, beat a couple of grandmasters, I believe, in the World Rapid Plays, only eight years of age. So it's an incredible generation of talents. And, you know, who knows how good these kids are going to go on to be. But I do mention this kid called Murugan, who ended up quitting chess. Now, did he quit chess because the pressure that he was under? I don't, I mean, I knew his parents. They weren't the kind of pushy parents, I don't think. So I don't think that was the case uh, with him. I think he just lost interest in chess. So just because a kid is very good when they're younger doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go on and uh, do chess for a living, become a professional chess player. So yeah, so the famous example of hot housing was the Polgar sisters. And uh, also mentioned a slightly negative article, which is about a YouTube mother uh, found guilty of child abuse, where she kind of treated her kids badly. I mean, I don't, you know, I wouldn't say that's true of any chess parents. Uh, but, yeah, so a lot of people would say that this is a common theme with YouTube. There's, like, YouTube families that are basically trying to make money off the back of their kids. And um, as far as chess is concerned, I don't think that's the case at all. But there is a case where if you've got a kid who's quite promising, well, you push them in that particular direction. And I mentioned this, um, for example, there's a seven-year-old kid. I, was, I mentioned Chess Base India because they're a, a very typical example of a site that is pushing uh, these prodigies. They're really promoting these prodigies. And I mentioned this kid, and I said, look, I'm feeling slightly jokey here, but in the video, he doesn't look very happy which his parents kind of jolly. So you do wonder, is there a kind of element where these kids are getting pushed into the chess and actually they don't really want to spend several hours a day studying chess? It, tip, it tends to be that, um, even in this country, it tends to be that white kids aren't really kind of in that kind of cultural 
uh, space where their parents are kind of pushing them to do many hours. That's often why white kids are falling behind, especially in comprehensives. They're falling behind Asians in particular who are sort of forging ahead. So uh, just to give you an example, I do a local school in Annick and um, typically a lot of the kids there, they don't do chess during the week. However, if you if you go to Newcastle, there's a school called um, uh, Royal Grammar, and a lot of the kids there, the better the better chess kids are Asian, and they're pushed to, to play chess at home. So that's often why they're forging ahead, not just in chess, but also ac academically as well. It's not racist to say that. I think that's the reality of the situation. Uh, it's not that Asian kids necessarily have a higher IQ. It's just that. Uh, essentially it's, it's embedded in the culture in Asia uh, to work hard and we don't necessarily have that in white culture but is that kind of hard work uh, going a little bit too far because yeah I kind of make this state that if you're sort of like a sort of six seven year old eight year old kid do you really want to be spending several hours a day studying chess probably not you'd rather play with your mates or play on the PlayStation is that a normal life is it a normal life to take a kid out of school when they're very young? As we've seen with prodigies in recent years, we've seen that with Magnus Carlsen, we saw that with Sergei Karyakin, who doesn't seem to have turned out to be a very rounded human being. We've seen that with uh, Pragananda, with Gukesh. They're probably taken out of school, a lot of these people, and essentially chess professionals from a very early age. Is that a normal way uh, to live? Yeah, one thing I would say, we had a very promising uh, player many years ago, still a very strong player now, Luke Shane. He went down a normal way. You could argue to actually become a world champion, you need to go down that extreme way. You need to basically take your kid out of school. And, um, and the, the problem with all this uh, chasing records is, is that, you know, you've got a situation where you've got seven-year-olds beating grandmasters and or eight-year-olds beating grandmasters and, and the bar is getting raised. In a few years, it'll be a seven-year-old beating a grandmaster. A few years, it'll be a six-year-old. And then if you're a promising nine-year-old kid and, they, and your parents say to you, look, that kid who's like your national rival beat a grandmaster two years ago, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you beating GMs? That's going to put more pressure on you to like work even harder. So I think there is a negative side to this, and uh, to mention this guy, Polgo, has really essentially um, started all this. And uh, he's from Hungary, and um, he essentially hot housed his kids to um, become like super talents. And I don't think any of them ever said. I don't think the Polgo sisters ever said, "Look, we didn't. We resent our father doing this to us." They always said that we, we really enjoy it. We love chess. We wanted to do chess. But is it a normal way to live when you're that young? I mean, to me, it isn't. There's something strange about it, right? But at the same time, they become successful adults. So it's an awkward subject, to be honest. But I do think that more needs to be discussed about this. And just mention this article about this kid. Apparently, he's a super talent. Boy 8 becomes youngest chess player ever to take down a grandmaster. As his parents admit, they were shocked at child prodigy's skill level. Again, do you really believe that, that they didn't push him? Uh, Indian-born prodigy defeated 37-year-old uh, Jacek Stopper. An 8-year-old chess prodigy made history by becoming the youngest ever player to defeat a grandmaster in a classical tournament game. Aswath Kashwick, not sure pronunciation, Achieved a record at tender age of 8 years, 6 months and 11 days when he beat Poland's Jacek Stopper in round 4 of the Bergdorfer Stadast Open in Switzerland. On Sunday, Kashik was named the first player under 9. Where's he from actually? Is he from India? Was he from... Um, yeah, he seems like a fairly happy kid, right? He's smiling, he's got his trophies, he's obviously a very, very talented player. And that's his parents. It looks like a happy family. Okay. He did actually play against um, Harry Grieve. So it says here, it spends up to seven hours each day playing chess and solving puzzles. Is that all from him? Or is that from his parents? Maybe it is all from him. Maybe he's just totally obsessed with chess. 
um, is, yeah, how is he able to spend seven hours a day if he's going to school? Maybe he's not going to school. So I do think there is a, I think actually lives in Singapore actually, he was born in India, has been living in Singapore, right. So interesting. It's impossible to tell who's going to be the dominant figure in, I think you could get a situation actually where you could get a world champion in like five or six years time, he's like 13 or 14. It wouldn't surprise me. People have predicted this before, but I think now we're getting this kind of freakish era where we've got these kids who are like phenomenally good. But I think there is a dark side to this. And I mentioned in my blog, I mentioned horse racing and how horses are forced to race. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like horse racing. I like horse racing, but I, I'm aware of the negative side of it. The horses, they don't have a choice. They're forced to race. And it's the same with chess. Now, Chess Base India are promoting a lot of these young talents because they're aware that, well, partly it helps to grow their own channel, but also it helps them, it helps the parents, helps the kids to achieve some kind of success. And, uh, you know, in India, if you achieve um, chess success, you get to the highest level, then potentially you're going to get sponsorship from the Indian government. You potentially going to get sponsorship from businesses. That's what's happened with Pragananda. Uh, you got a good lifestyle. You go around to uh, go around the world. Uh, you stay in nice hotels. You play against the best players in the world. Um, you know, so that's a very good uh, side to it. But on the other hand, it does create this kind of feverish competitive uh thing where they're saying that in the, in the brilliant uh, like seven year olds are smashing up gms and stuff where does it end you know is it and is that promoting a culture where the parents are being more and more pushy to try and produce the results so th these are just uh i'm just trying to open a discussion here i'm not trying to be negative i'm not trying to be like uh critical of a particular family or anyone in particular I'm just creating a, a, you know, a kind of a discussion here to say, well, actually, there is a negative side to it. There is potentially, you know, the kids are human beings themselves. Is it normal to ask them to spend seven hours a day studying chess? So that's basically my video. And please leave your comments down below. I'd be interested to see what you say about this whole um, business. I'll, I'll probably end up deleting the video eventually because I'll be like, get so much abuse from people. But yeah. Anyway, um, thanks for watching my video and uh, please subscribe to my channel.